as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought What's really good and welcome back to another virtual episode and a collaboration episode of Real Fans, Real Talk and The Sanchez Show. I'm your host, Eric Sanchez, a.k.a. Legend of Two Games. And as always, I got my homie with me, Trip Young. Trip, how are you doing today, bro? Man, I'm good, man. I, I, I can't complain, man. We, 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 out here, we out here working, but, um, but I'm, I'm good, baby. Absolutely. We always working no matter what, even, even in a pandemic, man. But we got to start with some NBA talk as we're approaching an all-star break. Everyone's talking about all-star snubs, and we're going to get into that in a second. But we got to talk about one of your least likely favorite players, Draymond Green. I, I know you're not a fan of Mr. Single Triple, as, as Chuck likes to call him. He recently spoke out in a paraphrase what he mentioned. He talked about Andre Drummond pretty much being told to sit tight until the Cavs are able to trade him. We also heard similar news about Blake Griffin, who the Pistons now are trying to figure out if they're going to trade him or buy him out. So I have to ask you, what are your thoughts on Draymond's comments? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Or do you feel he, he missed a couple top a couple points on this? Uh, actually, so, all right. So, you know what? Since Golden State has been, been broken down and beat down, I feel like Draymond has been humbled. So I'm actually kind of okay with him right now at, the, at, at this point. Now, when Clay comes back, who knows? Things might change. But right now, I'm, I'm, I'm in good terms, good standings with, uh, with Draymond. Um, and I actually, I, I agree with him, man. Um, you and I both know we, we, we're both pro player. Um, I mean, I guess there's probably only two owners, you know what I'm saying, that I would honestly say that I, I rock with like that. And that's obviously MJ because, you know, he's the GOAT. And then my main man, Mark Cuban down in, in, in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody in uh, Dallas, you know, that's going through all of that stuff with all the snowstorms and everything as well. Now that I mentioned Dallas. Um, but but I gotta I gotta agree with Draymond, man. There's always a different narrative painted when the players want out of a situation, as opposed to when the owners want to get rid of a player. You know, I hear everybody talking about you know, or it, at least people that's on that side. Oh, you know, well the contracts were signed, and you should honor the contract. Um, but a, a, a part of that that contract was you telling the player that we're going to put you in a position to win. So have you breached the contract then now, if we're not in a position to win, if you don't bring in pieces for us to compete at the highest level to go along with me when I sign my contract. So that, that, you know, that's a part of the, the argument that we don't really speak on because that is one thing when you, when you bring a player in, you know what I'm saying? Especially to a playoff caliber team. One of those things is, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're trying to win championships. So technically you've kind of breached that contract yourself. If you're not putting your team in a position to win, you know what I'm saying? That's one. And then the second thing is in regards to that is it's okay. You know, everybody's tight when a player wants to leave, but let's not forget, even though, you know what I'm saying? Isaiah Thomas might've spoke a little prematurely with the Brinks truck comment. That brother played a playoff game the day after his sister died in a car crash only for y'all to come back the following season to trade him as soon as a shiny new toy comes along. As soon as a better toy comes along, y'all went right along and traded him. Now, the thing that makes that worse is the idiotic fans that are out here burning Isaiah Thomas' jersey like he asked to leave Boston. That, that was like the icing on the cake, you know, on that one. So, but did you, but 
but did so did Boston not break the contract then? Because you signed Isaiah Thomas for however long you signed him for. His contract wasn't up when you traded him. If I'm not, if I, if, you know, if I'm not mistaken, he was he was going into the last year of his deal, right? So he still, so he technically, so he was still under that contract. So, but I didn't, I didn't hear. Oh man, the, I I don't know the Celtics owner's name off the top of my head, but you know the, the owner of the Celtics. You know, he broke the contract. He traded away Isaiah Thomas. Oh, man, that's that horrible. I can't believe he did that. He's a he's a bad guy. He's a cancer to the team. I don't I didn't hear none of that stuff when that when that happened. If I, you know, I, I don't know if you heard that, any of that, Eric, but I didn't I don't remember hearing anything negative being said about the owner, anything negative being said about Danny Ainge, who made the trade. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like, you know, this this. As a double standard here, so I, I agree a thousand percent with what Draymond said. So there's a couple layers to this to the comments that Draymond made and to this whole debate. So the first part, there isn't anywhere in the contract that states the team has to compete, right? Team, everybody fancies themselves as we're going to put a competitive team and we're going to try to win. We know that, but deep down, every team can't win, right? There's only a handful of teams that can really win. And especially in the NBA, NFL is different. That's a completely different argument because we know that flip flops every year between competitive teams and non-competitive teams. But in the NBA, for the most part, you got to have one of the top 20 players in a game to just even be in a conversation. Yes. Right. So th there's that part of it where I think Draymond was off. And, and to your point about Isaiah with, with the Celtics, you're right. No one criticized the organization. There were some in the media that I did hear were, that were uncomfortable with the trade that even though they felt Kyrie was the better player, they didn't want to acknowledge, hey, Boston won that deal because as you said, there was that underlying factor of you just traded a guy who played hurt and played after his sister passed away. You know, you could have at least tried to work out a contract extension before trading him. So there was always that uncomfortable nature about that trade. And I think even on Cleveland side, they, they knew he wasn't fully healthy, but it was also that we're not totally comfortable in telling this guy, let's just stay home. We want to at least try to see if he can work his way into a mega deal, a max, yeah. right? But here's where I think Draymond is off. So he's, he's on point in saying we got to hold everyone to the same level of professionalism. He is 1,000% correct about that. We see it all the time where owners and front office types can do certain things that players can't get away with. In the NFL, I'm a Colts fan. I remember a few years ago where Jim Ursay was found drunk driving a car yep. with multiple prescription pills. He was not fined by the league. He was not suspended in any way by the league. He was not punished in any way by the league. Spoke about that on the show. Right. So in terms of professionalism, Draymond is correct. Here's where I say he's wrong in this particular matter. When he says, oh, certain guys have to find out through the media they've been traded. Yes, that's unprofessional. But in terms of Andre Drummond, the team sat down with him and said, we feel it's in the best interest that we trade you to another situation. So we're going to sit you out. So the team did open up the dialogue with Andre Drummond. Now, he may not have liked the conversation. But that's better than the team saying, hey, we're going to report it to the media, but never tell Andre that he's not playing for us anymore. They did communicate with him. The other part of that as well is you can't have it both ways, at least not to me. If we're going to if we're going to hype up the guys and applaud them for player empowerment, we've got to understand that there's a, another side of that. Player empowerment only works, again, if you're one of the top 20 players in the NBA, right? If you're Kawhi Leonard, you're LeBron, of course, if you're AD, if you're Paul George, you get to call your shot. You're that powerful within the league. But guess what? For every one LeBron, there are four Andre Drummonds. Those guys don't have control over where they want to go. Those guys don't get to pick and call their shot. And so if we're going to allow guys to turn this into musical chairs of, I don't want to play here, I'm going to go there. I don't want to play here, I'm going to go there. Okay, cool. But for all you guys, big name guys that do that, you're hurting the lower name guys because now those guys become a victim of you wanting to move around so much. James Harden wanted to be traded. On the surface, everybody who's a Nets fan loved the idea. But how do you think Karis LeVert felt? Karis LeVert is a young guy on the verge of a payday. I'm sure he would have loved to stay in Brooklyn and try to win a championship there, right? The, the, the same, obviously, Spencer Dinwiddie. He's hurt, so he's still on the team. But all offseason, Spencer Dinwiddie kept hearing his name come up in trade talks. I'm sure he's a guy who openly recruited Kevin Durant and, and Kyrie to come to Brooklyn was probably feeling like, no, I want to stay here. I, I wanted them guys to come. Why are you trying to trade me? So it goes both ways. And I think Draymond was a little, little off for that, for that reason. Um, 
also, it's easy for Draymond to say that because Draymond has had success in Golden State. He has an open conversation with that ownership group. We know he is drastically overpaid for services that he stopped providing three years ago, right? Yeah. So it's easy for him to say, oh, you owners are unprofessional. You guys aren't giving these guys the benefit of the doubt. But bro, you've been given the benefit of the doubt when you have under exceeded that contract three years ago. So would it be, and it would be in all fairness, Golden State could easily say, you know what, Draymond, you're right. You haven't been producing. We should get rid of you and move on from you. And if they have that open dialogue with him, he would have to accept that. So yeah. to me, I feel I, that's where I feel he's a little off. Andre Drummond had the conversation with the front office. They decided to move on. And let's be honest, who wants to be on the Cavaliers right now? Um, Dan Gilbert. And that's right. Like <laughs> because Kevin Love ain't played in a year and a half. Yeah. Right. Ain't, ain't nobody speaking up for Kevin Love. Ain't nobody saying, why, why y'all ain't playing Kevin Love? He there, put him on the floor. He won out of there too. He don't care. Kevin Love don't care. He got his money and he got a ring. He good. Right. So that's my point. Andre Drummond is speaking about something that, like I said, to me, it doesn't have, it, it doesn't have the impact that he was hoping it would have. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't hit the same. There, there are a lot of guys who, who are forced to move around in this league without any voice in the matter. There are plenty. Every time one of these superstars want to get traded somewhere, Guess who gets the short end of the stick? The lesser named guys who have to get traded, right? You yeah. think you think Shea Gillis Alexander love he loves living in Oklahoma City as opposed to LA? I'm pretty sure he probably you know he he would rather be out in LA, right? But because Paul George is one of the top twenty to twenty five players in the league, and Paul George and Kawhi said we want to play together, Shea Gillis now becomes a victim of that circumstance. He becomes a casualty of war. Well, that's, so. I, so the that's the thing though. So there's going to be the guys, because again, like even, you know, just to go back to Spencer Dinwiddie, had he been traded, right. Again, he's under contract still with the nets. And if he had to be shipped out and, and that's somebody who, who we pretty much watched come up, got it through the mud with, 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 um, you know, with the nets helped him get to the playoffs. Uh, you know what I mean? So, and so for him now to be like, Oh damn, they brought in James Harden. I mean, it's James Harden, but I'm up out of here. But I was under contract with them, so as you know, it, it, it's, it's it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Right, and and so my point well, to Draymond is, if if we're applauding the guys for player empowerment, if we're applauding the James Hardens, the Kevin Durant, the LeBrons, the ads who get to say, I want to go here, and that's the only place I want to go, then they'll become casualties of war from that. And so nobody is mad, right? Like. Nobody is mad at the Laker organization for trading Brandon Ingram, um, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart for AD, right? Because you're the Lakers. We got the better player. So, okay, fine. But what about those young guys who that's the only home they've ever known? Now, those guys got to go to a less situation and nobody's crying and saying, oh, the Lakers handled that wrong, man. Lonzo Ball said himself, Lonzo and Brandon Ingram went to interview and Lonzo said, I found out through text. Nobody even called me. I found out through text that I got traded. That's now. So now, is that unprofessional? Do we do we do we talk about the ownership on that on that on that on that because that's who's responsible for? Because I got at least got a phone call. Like you text me, you pull you pulled the Kevin Durant and uh, Russell Westbrook. You just, Absolutely, but said you was coming what? back. You text me and said you was. <laughs> but why didn't why didn't Draymond mention Anthony Davis in his rant? Listen, because they were represented by Rich Paul. So. Yeah. Again, when you're when you're one of the upper echelon guys, you get to call your shot. Nobody is saying that that guy's acting unprofessional. He gets to call his shot. Unfortunately, the casualty of war is these lesser known guys. And that's why I say Andre Drummond is no different. Andre Drummond is not a top 25 player in the league. No, he's, he's middle of the pack. Right. So he's not going to get treated like one of those guys. They're not going to pull him into the office and say, hey, let's work out a trade partner. They're going to let him know when they're ready to trade him. They're ready to trade him. So they come to him now. Right, they didn't go to him two months ago and say, "Hey, look." But, but did he even did he even want to trade though? Did he want to leave Cleveland? Like, did he say? Did he ever say he wanted out? Because I think that's where where the trickiness comes in. If he said, "I want to trade, I want to leave here," then that's one thing. But if he never actually asked for a trade or asked to leave Cleveland, then now we back to, well, I'm under contract here, and now y'all trying to get something better. Y'all trying to get younger. Y'all trying to get well, what y'all trying to get. The Andre Drummond situation is, I don't think Andre, personally, I don't know this to be fact. I don't think Andre Drummond really wants to be there. I think the only reason he picked up his player option, because he's on the last year of his deal, 
was because he's making close to thirty million dollars, and he knew he wasn't going to make that on the open market. Yeah, right. So strategically, it made more sense to opt in for one year, boost my value. He's averaging a double double on a bad team, yeah. and and hopefully get a better contract on a better team. Well, so my, I think my out right. He he's he's in his twenties. He's in his late twenties. Yeah. My outlook on it is twenty nine. I think if he if he gets out of Cleveland and lands on a playoff caliber team and is still able to produce the same way he's been producing, he boosts his own value. Yeah. If he goes to Boston or happens to land with the Lakers or land with another playoff team and is still averaging a double double, he'll go into free agency next year and probably get a three year, $60 million contract. So, yeah, so, so it works out. Right. But now let's go back. Right. So LeBron drafted by Cleveland runs through his first contract. They do nothing to help him get to a championship. Second contract comes around. He's there for that. The organization has a chance to bring in Amari in his prime. Didn't want to get rid of J.J. Redick. So now, when it's time for LeBron to re-up again, I'm making that decision. I'm going to – I'm go, I'm out. I'm going, I'm going to Miami because, again, a part of that is – we are here to win championships. So if you tell me we're here to win championships and you're not actually putting us in a position to win championships, then I'm, yeah, I'm going to want to get up out of here. And for so long in the NBA, there wasn't no outs. You were stuck. That's why we, we see guys like Patrick Ewan, one of the greatest to ever play the game of basketball, but he got stuck with the, with the Knicks organization throughout his whole career. And he never got to do anything. Never, they never brought a solid number two player over. They had a, a solid number three with John Starks, but never a solid number two. So the organization never did anything to, to help him to, to help them win a championship. But he wound up getting caught in the gauntlet because at that time it was unheard of. Superstars didn't have that type of power. They may have had it, they just didn't utilize it, I should say. I'm not gonna say they didn't have it, they just didn't utilize it. But that's what we saw with a lot of these guys. You know what I'm saying? Now Granted, I know, you know, yeah, it was a big thing to be in one place for a long time, but I I guarantee you a lot of them guys that finished their careers with no rings, you know what I'm saying, wouldn't have minded being traded to a team to get some rings if they if they knew their, their, the power that they possessed during that time. Absolutely. And so, and this is why you and I are such a great combo, right? Because when I started my rant earlier, I said there are three parts to this conversation. The third part of that conversation is perception, and that's specifically media perception. So when you talked about LeBron, you're absolutely right. Now, LeBron is always going to be a very unique case study because he was the first megastar to ever do that. Yes. Make no mistake. At that age, at, at 20, what was he, 25, 26 when he left Cleveland? Yeah. About, yeah. Right? About 25, 26 at, yeah. at the most. Yeah, 26 because he's 36 no. now. Yeah. Yeah, no superstar had ever left their team in that fashion at that age. We had always seen guys who are older, you know, already into their 30s, looking to get a ring. That's now it. they join up with Down other guys. Up. Right. Right. But the media perception completely alters the whole game, right? If the media likes you, you're always going to get good coverage through the media, even when you're wrong. If the media is trying to find something wrong with you, they're going to hate you. So the media can never find anything wrong with LeBron James. So they always continue to, to, to latch on to the decision. Yeah. Even though we know this is a man who's lived his life in the public eye for over 20 years, right? No issues, no out of wedlock kids, never been arrested, never been in trouble with the law. But there's still okay. people to this day, there's still people to this day who are mad at him for a decision he made in 2010. A decision, a professional decision at that. Yeah, right? business decision. So, are you mad at right. him for, for him for for a decision he made in regards to his business? Absolutely. So that's the third factor in this whole discussion. Draymond's issue should not be with ownership because ownership has to do what's in the best interest of their team. Yeah. We as we as fans of the game and as journalists, when we sit here and critique trades, we critique them from the standpoint of did that make sense for your team? Why would you do that? Why would you sign that guy? Right? We don't sit there and say, well, maybe they signed that guy because they really like him because you know he gets along with the guy's wife or whatever, we critique it based off of does it make sense for the team? And so ownership is always going to make the best decision for their team. If they feel like moving on from Andre Drummond is the best decision for the Cavs, so be it. That's a business decision. The way the media covers it, 
is ultimately what's going to decide if we consider someone a cancer or if we consider somebody a bad guy. We all knew that James Harden loved the party. Anybody who has Instagram has seen James Harden in Las Vegas several times a year. Yeah. But it wasn't until he said, I'm leaving Houston and I want out that we started hearing all these wild stories of him leaving on private jets from city to city. And if the team had two days off, he decided to stay in Miami an extra night. We never heard about those stories the eight prior years in Houston. It was only when he said he wanted out. That's not ownership's fault. That's the media deciding now we're going to come at this guy because we don't like how he's handled that situation. Now, it because the ownership, though, I will say this, the ownership does kind of have a little piece in that because now when everything is good, there's certain things that we might know in-house that we're not going to let out. But when you want to leave, we're going to let the cat out the bag on a couple of these things here. And you know what I'm saying? Because now we, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you, you're not rocking with us. Okay. So now you don't get no more favors, no more sweeping your dirt under the rug or anything that you may have done. Um, I think that, I think Draymond would have been better served had he included the media in that in in his statement. And I say that because had he said that when ownership does these things, they don't get that type of media coverage. I think that would have served his, his point, uh, you know, a little bit better. And then he could, he, then he should have really, at that point, that was when you bring up, because Isaiah Thomas really is the best case to defend Draymond Green's point because he literally lost probably one of the closest people to him in life, went the next day, played a playoff game, did his thing just for y'all to come back the following season and say, oh, Kyrie's available. Okay, get up out of here, Isaiah. We don't need you no more. Ky- Kyrie's uh, available. But you know I what? Agree. They got they got theirs though in the end though. <laughs> I agree. Both, I- both they got theirs though. I 1000% agree. Uh, Isaiah is the perfect case study. He's the perfect example. Um, But like I said, there there are a lot of different layers to it. And uh, I know myself, I've been critical of the way LeBron handles rosters, right? But I also understand why he he has that type of handle over it. LeBron views it in in a way that, hey, if we win, it's on me. If we lose, it's on me. So give me the other 11 guys who I can go to war with. And I completely get it because LeBron's legacy is tied really to the guys he plays with, right? If the guys he plays with are able to rise to his level, he can now enter the conversation of the all-time greats. Yes. So I get it. I, again, like I said, my my thing with Draymond was cool. I get your point, but let's have the let's open up the conversation to all these different layers of it. Again, if we're gonna if we're gonna encourage player empowerment. We got to see what we got to accept what comes with the other side of that. And the other side of that yes. is there are lesser known players who don't have that type of power. Yes. Right. And, and listen, and don't that get, being said, let's, cause if I, before you go, because if I was the owner, I'd be thinking about, I'd be thinking like owner. That's what yeah, I want to be clear. If I own the team, what's best for I'm going to do what's best for the team and my bottom line. So I want, I do want to be clear on that as well. So I do understand both sides of the spectrum on this one. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's get into some all-star talk, man. The, the rosters official, the, the Five on each side have officially come out. Uh, I believe the reserves come out later this week. Mm-hmm. Dame is getting a lot of talk as the biggest snub. Do you feel he was the biggest snub? And if so, who would you have taken out on that West roster? Well, there's only one person that you could have taken out real- realistically because Dame's a guard. So he wasn't going to, you know what I'm saying? So you can't move LeBron, Jokic, or or Kawhi for him. So it really comes down to Steph and Luka. I mean, you see what Steph is doing this season. So, you know, there's not even a question that you could an argument you could make to say he should replace Steph. So the, then it come, it comes down to, to Luca, you know what I'm saying? So, but I, I, you know, even, even with Luca, you know what I mean? I think it's, it's it, again, it's just another, you know, perception thing, because if you feel like, you know, like you want, you want Luca in that spot. Cause if you're looking at his individual numbers, you know what I'm saying? Like his his individual stats can go toe to toe with pretty much anybody in the league. If you want to go record wise, Dame has the better record. But anytime we have these discussions about all star snubs, specifically when it deals with the starting lineup, I always go back to the Yao Ming effect. That's the popular vote. If that's who the people, you know what I'm saying? Like the people vote for the starters. So 
Yeah. Like, bro, how many how many years did we go? How many different times did we see Vince was out the first half of the season? AI was out the first half of the season, but they were voted as starters to the All-Star game. It happens. You know what I mean? What are, what are you going to do? He made the All-Star team. Obviously, he's going to be he's going to be a reserve on the All-Star team. Did he deserve to start? Possibly. Depends on how you look at it. But if we're, if we're comparing numbers to, you know what I'm saying, Dame versus versus Luca, they they they're pretty close. I mean, Luca probably has them, you know, with the assists and the rebounds. But as far as scoring, and then if you want, like again, if you want to tally in, you know, the record, you know, Dame has the advantage with the record wise. Uh, the scoring is pretty pretty close, and then Luca has the advantage with the with the assists and the rebounds. You know what I'm saying? So. Honestly, either way, I'm okay with it. I like both of them. I think they're both great. I want to see both of them. We're going to see both of them in the game anyway. Uh, you know what I mean? So even when we say, when we talk about snubs, I'd be more concerned about who was snubbed from the reserves that actually deserved to make the team and didn't necessarily than the starters because I do understand the Yao Ming effect. Absolutely. You're 1,000% correct. And I was going to say the same thing. Uh, it's a toss-up when you consider stats. I do like your point of view on Dame's team being, uh, I believe they're third or fourth in the West as of today. The fifth. Um, so he has the advantage there. And he's the same way Luca's had Przingis in and out of the lineup. CJ McCollum has been out for a few weeks now. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he's going to make the game. And like you said, it's a popular vote. And majority of the people who are voting for this are kids who want to see their favorite player on the court. So he'll be there. If he doesn't make the team, then it's a snub. But if he makes the team, it doesn't matter whether he starts or not. Yeah, or if it's if it, in Yao Ming's case, it's the eight billion people. <laughs> oh, well, and, and that yes, in, in the Yao Ming situation, that's that that's one in a generation. <laughs> that's one in a generation factor right there. Um, but speaking like of the All Star Game, yes. yeah, speaking of the All Star Game, we we may not see two of the game's biggest stars. Anthony Davis, uh, they said he will be out at least four weeks. Kevin Durant is still out. Um, original timetable is looking like another week or two, but it may be even longer than that. And being that it's a hamstring, precautionary reasons, he may just sit out the game or play limited minutes as well. Uh, you as a... Right, but with you having a rooting interest in the Lakers, how concerned are you with this Anthony Davis injury? Um, I'm concerned to an extent because it's regular season right now. And I think that LeBron is is good enough to carry the the load and again i you know i've been saying for the past couple of weeks that the lakers are going to make a move um i you know i know they're looking at a couple of guys uh blake and andre Drummond in specific they've been looking at those obviously would have to be with buyouts um they're looking at a song white side who they could probably get for really cheap so there's a couple of moves the Lakers have been uh, been talking about the past couple of weeks. So I just think a move is going to be made. And I mean, LeBron, if you got LeBron James on the team, they're going to be good. Like, it's not like a situation where I feel like, oh, if they lose Anthony Davis and now they're not going to make the playoffs. No, LeBron is going to carry that team to the playoffs. And in actuality, I actually, obviously I want to see, I, I don't want to see Anton, um, Anthony Davis hurt, but for you know just because i know people will the, the the voters will snake lebron out of an mvp award when they can so just because of that I, i'm kind of like you know what i right, watch this watch what watch what lebron does now you gotta give him his, his fifth mvp award i'll say this i mean they're making a playoffs no matter what and seeding doesn't matter they're if, if healthy they're the best team in the west point blank period that's if they My go back concern what happened? I was especially if they go back to the bubble, then oh, it's like, you know what? Especially, hey, yeah, it don't even, yeah. But um, my only concern is to the point you made about then LeBron having to carry that load and having to be MVP LeBron. Because we can't forget, they're coming off a very short offseason, and that's the quickest way for you to get gas going into the playoffs, having to play 35, 40 minutes a night to make sure you guys win. I think they're the best team in the West when healthy. My only concern, again, would be putting too much of a load on LeBron at this age and coming off this type of offseason where it, it really was no offseason at all. Um, but just be sure if you guys are going to trade for Hassan Whiteside, you check with Draymond and make sure Draymond's all right with the trade. 
he, <laughs> he's got to approve trades from now on. Uh, speak, speaking of trades, though, bro, let, let's transition. Let's get into some NFL talk. Mm -hmm. um, Carson Wentz, a division rival of yours. He's on his way out of the division. He's on his way to Indianapolis. What were your thoughts when you first heard the trade? Oh, I, I thought about, about you as soon as I seen the trade. I said, okay, Eric's going to be happy about it. I did get a quick text. I did get a quick text. Yes. <laughs> especially when, when, I, when I saw what they gave up to get him, a third-round draft pick and a conditional second-round pick that may or may not turn into a first-rounder. Man, listen, y'all came off. Oh, man, something crazy. I, I agree. I think it's a great trade for the organization. Uh, realistically, because of the dead cap money and what he had guaranteed, it really amounts to a two-year, I think, $45 million deal. So in comparison of what starting quarterbacks make, that's a great deal. Still leaves a lot of cap space to fill out any other areas that we want to fill out. Um, we had a top seven defense, and we had an offense that could put up points. It showed in the game against Buffalo. We just need some stability at the quarterback position. So hopefully Frank Wright could revitalize his career a little bit and have him looking like 2017 Carson Wentz and not 2020. Listen, you hit the nail on the head. He's got weapons. He got receivers out there. He's got a really good young running back who really set the tone this year as far as amongst the rookie running backs. Um, and then they have a, a good defense. But most importantly, and the thing that he didn't have in Philly was he's going to be back to having a good offensive line. And I think that's what's going to help him out the most. Um, again, you see back with the, with the, with, with, with the former OC, that's going to be a plus for him. I loved it. I, like I said, I love the move. Um, and then you know, on the Eagles side, I thought they would have been able to get more for Carson Wentz. I mean, we are talking about somebody that, you know, I know he didn't get MVP, but I feel like if, if Carson Wentz would have stayed healthy that season, if he didn't miss the last couple of games, I think he gets the MVP instead of Tom Brady that year had he stayed healthy because we saw what the team wound up doing. They were able to still push all the way through to the Super Bowl. Obviously, we you know Nick Foles held it down when they when they got to the end, but you know, he's in a good position now. The Eagles, however, I don't know what they're gonna do. Um, I don't know if they if they drafted another quarterback. Well, they may draft another quarterback, but later in the round, I don't know if they'll draft a quarterback early. Um, I I would like to see them give Jalen Hurts a legitimate shot but they have to improve on a lot of things for him to realistically be in a position to, to excel to his fullest potential. And I don't know if they have enough right now because they're missing. They, they got so many holes. They just released uh, Deshaun Jackson. Um, Zach Ertz is probably going to be on his way out. I know they still have Goddard, who's a pretty good back uh, tight, tight end to kind of fill the void, but the offensive line still has a lot of holes. Those Jason Peters is he's done. You know what I mean? Kelsey, like a lot of these guys are older. It's just, you know, oh, 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 you know, age, you know, doesn't doesn't stop for anybody. So it's going to take a lot. And I love it. You know, as a Giants fan, I'm perfectly okay with that, you know? Well, no, you're right. They're, they're over, uh, Jason Peters might be out. Kelsey has hinted at possibly retiring as well. Deshaun is on his way out. And it's, it's an odd situation. I mean, he must have really said, I want out because Nick Sirianni, who they hired as the head coach, was Ooh. the offensive coordinator with the Colts? Who you say? Was it was Nick it, Sirianni? Who was it? Was his name? Nick Sirianni. I never heard him. Tell him keep banging. <laughs> I, I I know, but, I'm, but hit me out though. He was the offensive coordinator with the Colts, which means the same offense that Carson Wentz was already comfortable with was coming to Philly. So he must have really said, "I'm out." I don't think they draft the quarterback. I think it's Jalen Hurts. They remember they drafted Jalen in the second round last year. That's a high pick for a yes. quarterback. I think they at least give him one full season to see if it works. But if you're Philly, this move with the amount of dead cap you're taking on, I think they're almost $70 million over the cap. Yes. Even before they before they figure out the rest of these moves. So like you said, Zach Ertz gone. Deshaun is already gone. Alshon Jeffrey might be gone. There's going to be a lot of moving and shaking going on in Philly. Yeah. Not in a good way. And I feel bad for Hurts because it's going to be rough. <laughs> Jalen Hurts Jalen Hurts going to be playing behind a bad offensive that, line. That, that's, what, that's why I'm, I'm good. I, I, I don't like it. Because he's gonna get the short end of the stick, and everything's gonna fall on him, all of the blame and everything. Well, he's not good enough. But, you know, knowing and everybody knows he's in the one of the worst situations, but he's gonna get the the bulk of the blame when they don't succeed. He's gonna be playing behind a bad offensive line with a lack of weapons. Because remember, their first round pick, Jalen Rager, was a bust last year. Yeah. So 
they're in a really bad spot. But speaking of spots, J.J. Watt, he's on his way out of Houston. Where do you think he lands? Where, where do you think is the best fit for him, I should say? Uh, well, I, okay. So I, I would say two places, maybe even maybe even three. I wouldn't, I would, obviously the Steelers, you know, and that's more, more so because the family's brothers play fullback and linebacker. So, you know, it'd be nice to see the three Watt brothers on the same team. They would like the subway commercials, you know what I'm saying? So that's one, but that's, that's solely based on them being there. But then the other two, I think at this point in, in, in JJ Watt's career, he's made enough money. So if I'm him, I'm thinking about taking a pay cut, going to the chiefs, going to the bucks, you know, the Bucks, uh, the Bucks are going to need some pieces to fill in because they're not going to be able to keep everybody. But if you can get J.J. Watt for cheap, that's a huge pickup. And I think J.J. Watt, at this point in his career, it's time. He, he I don't see him going to a place where he doesn't have a chance at getting a ring unless somebody is throwing some astronomical numbers at him, which I don't see at this point in his career. Like, you're not throwing... JJ Watt 30 million next year. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I think he goes to a, a playoff contender and well, you know what I'm saying? To go but the top, might as well start the top with the Chiefs or or the Buccaneers. The Chiefs is an interesting one. Um I don't know what their I without looking at it, I don't, I'm not sure what their cap situation is. And I don't know because of the type of uh loss they had in the Super Bowl, they may allocate all their funds to the offensive line. They may really just say, look, man, we, we well, they got an offensive line, but they just go and got hurt. They the backups got hurt. Too. Well, the backups got hurt, but Eric Fish is in his 30s. So, and and because he got hurt so late in this season, you don't know how that's gonna affect him going to next season. Yeah. Uh Duvernay, who opted out because of COVID, he's the doctor. They still not sure if he's gonna be back next year. So that might be two guys already that you're missing. Um, but JJ could be an interesting fit there. I, I like the Pittsburgh fit. And again, Tampa the minimum we're talking about, he's gonna have to take a huge right. pay cut. So you got Tampa makes a lot of sense because I don't know if they're going to be able to keep Shaq Barrett. So he could actually come in and fill in for Shaq Barrett to go with JPP and Dominica yes. Sue and Vita Vey, and they'll be off and running. The one team I think that makes a lot of sense because of a connection is Tennessee. Tennessee needs a pass rusher. Okay. And Rabel was a defensive coach on those Texans teams a few years ago when JJ was winning defensive player of the year. Okay. So if he's willing, and remember last year, they brought in uh, Vic Beasley. That didn't work. They brought in Clowney. Clowney really didn't have the impact they expected. So they still need an edge rusher. I think if the right, that fit might work because he already knows the defensive scheme. That's a playoff caliber team. And he has a connection to the coaching staff. But in terms of winning a rink, obviously it starts with Tampa and Kansas City. Yeah. You know, either, either way, shout out to J.J. Watt. You know, I definitely, any chance I get, I'd like to commend J.J. Watt for all the work that he did. Um, in Texas during the, uh, the, the the hurricane and all of that, raising all, all that money, he, like he put on for, for Houston, you know? So big shout out to JJ Watt, wherever he lands, I'm looking forward to seeing him because I feel like he does have some years left in the tank, but I do want to see him on the contender and the Texans ain't it. Everybody's leaving the Texans. Right. Uh, Will, Will Fuller is probably going to be up out of there as well. So they already, you know, they're getting worse and worse. We know what's going on with Deshaun Watson. It's, I think it's just a matter of when, not if, they trade him. So looking forward to seeing where J.J. Watt goes. It would be fun, though. I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad, though, if he did go to the Steelers and just rocked out with his brothers, you know, for I mean, it'd be dope. a couple of years. Yeah. It'd be but, dope. I mean, Pittsburgh got a lot of good young defensive players, so he he would come in almost like a specialist. Like, I'm just here to get to the quarterback. You know yes. what I'm saying? Y'all worry about the running game. I'm going to the quarterback. Exactly. So it could be fun. And same thing with Green Bay. I know everybody's talking about Green Bay because he played his college ball in Wisconsin. That might make sense too, but either way, we want to see him on a contender. We want to see him playing for something. It could be up on defense, though. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know what though, we we also got to commend him, like you said, not only for his work during the uh, hurricane, but he was very vocal uh, during protests. You know, mid part of last year, when when mm -hmm. when the country was really a boiling pot, he was very vocal and very supportive of Black Lives Matter and everything that was going on in the country. So we one definitely of the salute few him. Top white players yeah to, to to speak up that's a fact i'm clear with that one of the few top because not only was he right one of the few top white players he was one of the first athletes in general yes to speak 
Exactly. So definitely shout out to him. And while we're talking about the NFL, um, we cannot forget, you know, send our prayers out to Vincent Jackson and his family. He Mm -hmm. recently lost his life. Um, Unfortunate circumstance. We don't know all the details, but there's been rumors that he was bad on alcoholism as well as possible CTE. He was only 38 years old. So a very young man. He's behind a wife and two kids, man. So our thoughts and prayers are definitely with his family. That's that's a fact, bro. It, you know, and I got I got to say this because, you know, we deal, we see a lot of this within the sports world, you know, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, pills, you know, and if you want to throw in, you know, the CT stuff as far as football goes, it, you know, reach out to these people, check in with these people. You know, if something doesn't seem right, you know what I'm saying? Just just try to, to, to put a hand out and reach out because you never know what a person is going through. Um, you know, I know that you know the Bucks just won. He was he was he was with the Bucks for, for quite some time. You know what I mean? So in 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 with football, when you play with a team for a certain amount of years, you become a part of that fabric, part of that fraternity of brothers with that organization. So you know, I know I know that one kind of hit home throughout the, the the Bucks organization as well. So again, condolences to to his family and friends. Yeah, that, that's a great point because uh, everything I heard coming out this week was very positive about him. Uh, whether it was players that he was with in San Diego or even with Tampa, um, you know, obviously Tampa still celebrating the Super Bowl win. But Mike Evans spoke out about how Vincent was like a mentor to him when he first came into the league. Exactly. And everyone talked highly of, you know, his work in the community. He was a family man, but obviously, you know, he was dealing with some demons that he just wasn't able to overcome. Yep. Um, a, a, another young man we need to speak about that. We talked about it before on the show a little over a year ago in terms of some possible demons. Uh, Kellen Winslow Jr. Mm. Uh, um, he, he's been accused of some very disable things. And uh, he, he accepted a plea deal, 14 in prison. Again, there's a follow-up. I, I don't remember exactly, but we had we actually talked about this topic, I want to say about a year and a half ago, maybe a little over a year ago. But then that, I know it was before then, the pandemic hit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Trip, what were your thoughts when you heard this? And, uh, you know, take it away from there. What, what were you thinking? Um, I mean, accountability. That's what I was thinking, accountability. You know, he did, he did what he did. And, you know, unfortunately... What he did can't be undone, you know. The, the the those victims have to live with that for the rest of their lives. Their families have to live with that. Their friends, and then also he has to live with that for the rest of his life, um, you know. So, and that that's just basically where where I'm at with it. He took that he, 14 years, you know. And I'm a person, I don't wish death, I don't wish jail on nobody because I understand, you know, what I'm saying what that's like. You know, but at the same time, the age old adage, you do the crime, you got to, you know, you got to do the time that comes with that. And this is him, you know, taking that accountability. So I hope, you know, for his sake that in these 14 years, some positive can come out of that. He can turn his life around, you know, whatever. I also hope that this gives closure to the victims, their family and, and their friends and people that have had to to have this looming because it's 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 one thing going through that and having that and having something that horrific done to you but to have to relive that going through a trial that is can be such a mental toll on everybody involved so i I just hope that this gives closure to the people that are involved i know it's still going to take a while for you know i guess for ultimate healing but i hope this is a start I agree. I hope it's the first step in rehabilitation for him. And for for you young guys and young women out there that watch the show and listen to us, I know you've heard the phrase, there's nothing worse than than lost potential or wasted talent. And for those of you that may be too young that didn't know his game or never saw him, this is the epitome of that. Because, you know, Tripp, you know, we we both knew this guy coming out of college. Yep. And, And the world was literally his oyster. He was set to be the next great tight end in the league high first round pick i believe he went sixth overall to, to the browns fast and athletic strong had him on all my madden he was, teams he was he was travis kelsey before travis kelsey yes. he wasn't the physical he wasn't the physical beast that gronk is yeah he was in terms, yeah in terms of skill 
in terms of skill, he was almost a cross between like an Evan Ingram and a Travis Kelsey. Super fast, but a big dude, great hands, could do it all on the field. And it just started to spiral out of control from for him very early in his career. And even after his career has continued to spiral out of control. So I hope this is, like you said, the first step accountability. And now let's let's rehabilitate and, and make sure you're a better man when you come out of this than when you went into it. Yeah. Um Trip, we got to get into some boxing though. We got into some basketball, we got into some football. There's another person, another young athlete who's trying to rehabilitate their image as well. So he's not brushing his hair in the ring or having his girls come in the ring and brush his hair after the fight? Has he matured a little bit? I, I, I'm hoping he has matured. I don't know, though, because I feel like we just spoke about him a couple of weeks and some more BS. It's Listen, <laughs> it's A.B., not Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown has found a way to get himself right. We got that AB. AB stuff. No, you can't name this up AB no more. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. care what your name is. No right. more ABs. We, we've got to address you by your government name. Yes. Adrian Broner, who at one time called himself about billions, but was recently in a courtroom and said, I got $12 in my checking account. It was about nickels at that point. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, he came he back yesterday. $13 to $13 million. Yeah. I said that. <laughs> Listen, he, he he made his his uh his return to the ring. He had been out of action for about two years. He hadn't won a fight in four years. Jesus. It was it was probably one of the most unimpressive unanimous decisions you'll ever see. But A B is back. Are you excited? Not excited at all, to be honest. With you. <laughs> listen, that was a quick no. That was a very yeah, quick no. Because I'm listen, kudos, you got the win, but it's just so much going on with AB. One and just two, you got to really prove to me. I'm all for the redeem story. You getting back to where you were, but you got to show me. I've seen we've we literally. I feel like it was maybe a month or so ago we were talking about some him lying in court about the money was what about a, was about a month ago right so yeah, it, I, it was uh about a month and a half ago it was after the danny garcia errol spence fight yeah so and then you know you win this fight which is great but the the way you're speaking after the fight i, I went from 13 dollars to 13 million now i feel like now i feel like you haven't learned anything so you got to show and prove in this situation because it's him if it was another person, it'd be different. But because it's Adrian Broner and we're used to the shenanigans that, that he's been doing the past couple of years, you got to show and prove. I need to see more than this. I need to see some consistency. Because, again, wasted talent. This was a guy who was one of the top guys in boxing, had, had, had potential to be way better and way farther in his career than he is right now. But... You let the distractions of the outside world get to you, and this is where we're at. So, again, show and prove. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm not saying it can't change, but you got to show me. 1,000%. Listen, young listeners, if you didn't learn anything else today, don't be wasted talent, right? Uh, and I love making comparisons. At one point, for those of you that may not remember how good Adrian Broner was about six to eight years ago, Adrian Broner was Javante Davis. Yeah. He was the young lion who was supposed to take over the throne from Floyd Mayweather. Yes. Right? Yes. He was the guy in line to be the next great welterweight champion. Absolutely. And as you said, the outside distractions, he wanted to do rap albums. He got into a fight at a dice game. He was getting, this is all facts. He got into a fight, in, you know, outside of a club. Then the fight in the club leads to him being sued by a woman. And that's why he was in court recently because he still has not paid that woman. Yeah. And then he tried to tell the judge, I only got like $12 to my name. I ain't got nothing. That was my friend's money. I was flashing on IG. FYI, I stopped flashing money on IG. You think? <laughs> right. I think the only thing I, listen, Adrian, I, I hope you've matured enough to realize, look, just stay in the ring. You, you can make some decent money if all you do is just fight and stay out of trouble. Yeah. And Again, for a guy that wasn't fighting on pay-per-view to make $13 million, you made a, a good piece of change for a guy who's not even one of the top, he's not even one of the top seven welterweights in the world. Yeah. He might but have, he got a name. At this point. But yeah, he does have a name. But I, I do think the moral to the story is, children, you don't want to be AB or WT. Wasted right. talent. Right. <laughs> That's just WT, okay? Don't but, want to waste the talent. Exactly. But I, I hope he does well, man. 
I, I want to last see- but not least, let's wrap up with a, with a former Yankee, former Red Sox, Johnny Damon. Don't thought, listen, I, you know what? Because you're wearing a Yankee hat, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let that one go. But don't be putting that's that's some Boston stuff there. That's what they do in Boston. He played with both of you guys, though. Yes, but when he was with us, he was clean cut. We made him shave, cut his head down. But you know how they say you could take a chick out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the chick. You could take a so he still you could take a player out of Boston, he, but you can't take the Boston out of the player. So he still he still had a little bit. What they they used to call themselves? What they used to call themselves? The idiots? Something like that? Remember that that Boston team? They used to call themselves something like that. that listen, I know they was drinking was it drinking beer and eating chicken in the dugout. Yeah, that that too, that too, <laughs> that too. But that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, no, that's that that's that Boston stuff. You know, when you was in New York, Stein Brennan on didn't play that. He was he was cool. Now he 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 leave New York, got a little chip with us. You know, he he revert back to the old ways of his Boston days. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is why it's important to make sure if you're an athlete, especially because sometimes we view these athletes and we forget that by the term by the time they 35, 40, they washed up in terms of athletics they still human beings they still very young but they don't know how to handle themselves johnny damon you know better bro you you can't be out here getting no duis you know what i'm saying Look, looking like you still drunk out of your mind in the mug shot yeah exactly <laughs> it, it can't be flowing like that bro you got to do better I, I was just disappointed i was glad though when i seen the story for the most part the headline said red Sox. it didn't say it didn't the most of this, the articles i saw they didn't really include the New York part in there. Even when I said when I saw it on TMZ, it was like former Red Sox. So I guess they kind of get it too. We know that's that's how they do it. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bring that mess to us. It's, it's a stigma already attached to that Steve. Trip, before we go, man, any final thoughts? Oh, you know what? I will I will some positive Yankee stuff. Okay. Our main man Brett Gardner will be back for another year. The Yankees re-signed him, which I love. He's he's a, a lifetime Yankee and he deserves it. He's been with, with the Yankees for a long time championship. He is probably one of the classiest brothers in, in Major League Baseball. He's proven not only in the regular season, but also in the playoffs. And he's definitely a great mentor to all of the young guys on the team. Yeah, definitely a Yankee lifer. And I will say this on a positive note, too, because we were talking about the DUI. If anybody who hasn't already, check out the CC Sabathia documentary on HBO Max. It's, it's a great watch. A lot of a lot of life lessons in there. And I didn't realize CC dealt with some of the things he dealt with. I knew about the alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. Yeah, but it, when he tells his backstory and and some of the demons that he had, it's, it's a really good watch. Trust me on that, man. Um, with that being said, man, keep oh, tuning hold on, in. Hold on, before we, shout out. We got we got to drop the sponsors. Absolutely. Metro Home Services, Kmart, the Rosado Firm, Soundview Liquors. Make sure you guys are subscribed to all of our affiliate podcasts. The Sanchez Show, Real Fans, Real Talk, and of course, shooting the shit. And make sure you guys are following us on all of our social media, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans, Real Talk, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash For the Fans Productions. And do not worry if you are not in New York City on Thursday nights and you can't watch us on Verizon 43, you can watch straight from the website, realfansrealtalk.com. Just click that red button right on the home page and watch every Thursday at 8 o'clock. You beat me to it, bro. With that being said, I am Legend of Two Games. That is Trip Young, and we out of here. Peace. Type of blend backing up misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from eight to nine for the older folk.
joke So even if you younger, no matter what sport This show, we got it covered It's filmed live in the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays What's up guys, I'm Emerald Marie And be sure to check us out on the web At realfansrealtalk.com